Assassin's Creed Liberation is an interesting game for the AC series. It came out the same day as Assassin's Creed 3 on October 30th, 2012 on the PS Vita before the HD version was released for the PS3 in 2014 and it became part of the Assassin's Creed 3 remastered package. It's about 8 hours long and to be honest, I'm not even sure if it can be considered a full game. It kind of feels long enough to be a standalone game but could also be passed up as a DLC, but regardless of what it classes as, I want to return to it and see how it holds up, because Liberation wasn't very well received by the community, and it has a very odd place among the rest of the series. It uses the exact same engine and gameplay mechanics as Assassin's Creed 3 with a few minor differences, along with some new unique additions you won't find in any other Assassin's Creed game, and it's an odd and unique experience for the series to say the least. Let's start off with what Liberation is actually about though. Liberation takes place in around the same time period as AC3, in the 1760s and 70s. However, instead of taking place in the American colonies, it takes place in the south, in New Orleans, Louisiana. The colony is French, but owned by the Spanish, who are up to some devious schemes, backed by the Templars as it often goes in Assassin's Creed. The protagonist is Aveline de Grand Pre, hope I'm saying that right, a woman of French and African heritage whose father was a wealthy merchant and mother a former slave. Avalyn's mother left at a young age for mysterious reasons, and Avalyn was raised in a wealthy and privileged home in New Orleans by her father and stepmother Madeleine. Avalyn recognized the injustice and cruelty of society in New Orleans and began to pursue freedom, wanting to free the slaves and impose justice, which led to her eventually meeting an assassin and her mentor, Agate, as he teached her the ways of the Brotherhood and brought her into the assassins. Avalyn's story is quite unique for this series. I appreciate what they were trying to go for, but ultimately, I didn't find her to be a great protagonist particularly. She felt a little bland to me like many of the characters in the story, but hey, at least she's an assassin, which as we all know is a rare privilege these days. But like I said, a big majority of the story can really feel bland and boring, the voice acting isn't great, the characters aren't particularly compelling, and the assassins versus templar conflict felt quite weak in Liberation. I had a really hard time staying engaged and invested in this story. It does pick up a bit towards the end of the game, where things start to get pretty interesting, but ultimately, the story isn't great. There is no modern day storyline in Liberation per se, instead you're some random person playing a game Abstergo created based on Avalyn's memories, only Abstergo altered the events of what happened with Avalyn to make the Templars look good. However, a mysterious hacker wants you to reveal the truth of what really happened and what Abstergo changed, so he introduces something called Citizen E, which has you assassinate an NPC in your vicinity that will reveal parts of previous cutscenes that were altered or cut out by Abstergo. I think that was a really cool concept, I wish it could have been executed a little better and had more of these moments, but it made for a cool, mysterious element to the game, and trying to figure out why Abstergo didn't want you to see some of these extra moments. Connor Kenway also makes a brief appearance in this game, where he and Avalyn work together. It's not much, but it's cool to see Connor in here and how he and Avalyn interact. Like I mentioned at the beginning, Liberation uses the same engine and gameplay mechanics of Assassin's Creed 3 with some new additions. The Persona's probably being the biggest one. In Liberation, you can go to changing areas spread across the map where you can change into one of your three Personas, being the Lady Persona, where Avalyn gets into her fancy dress, where you can charm guards, enter fancy restricted areas, and you lose a lot of notoriety, making it harder for guards to detect you. However, while in the Lady Persona, you can't sprint or park parkour. There's then the assassin persona where you get full range of motion with movement and parkour and you can use all your weapons and assassin tools, however it will be easier for you to gain notoriety and for guards to detect you. And then finally there's the slave persona which allows you to blend in with slaves and sneak into plantations and all that. You still get full range of motion and parkour, however you don't get to use all your weapons and tools except for the hidden blades of course. Each persona has a different notoriety bar making it effective to change personas when one has too much notoriety. You also can clear notoriety with each persona differently. For the slave persona, you have to remove wanted posters. For the lady persona, you have to kill witnesses. And the assassin persona, you have to bribe officials. It's not anything new for the series, but it's cool how each persona has different notoriety systems. I thought the whole persona system was really cool, and I like how it promotes a little strategy and provides for a lot more social stealth elements by disguising yourself in all the different personas. For example, the lady persona has this blowgun that 
that shoots poison darts that's disguised as a fancy umbrella, which makes for some really cool social stealth moments. Liberation uses that same great feeling combat system from Assassin's Creed 3 that's smooth, brutal, and ever so satisfying. I am a little disappointed that they reuse the same animations Connor has for Avalon. It would have been cool to have some new combat and execution animations. Liberation also introduced something a little new to combat with the chain kill that allows you to instantly chain kill a select amount of enemies at a time. Don't really know if something like this was necessary for the combat system, but it's a nice little new addition nonetheless. The stealth is also the same as AC3, which isn't exactly a good thing. I'm not personally a fan of this stealth system, but Liberation still has some fun infiltration slash black box assassination missions. Liberation also uses a lot of the same tools and weapons present in AC3. Of course, the hidden blade, smoke bombs, pistol, cutlass, axe, and the poison darts. You can even use Connor's tomahawk. However, one new tool you get in the game is the whip. It doesn't really do a whole lot. You use it for some parkour sections and you can use it in combat to pull your enemies toward you. Unfortunately, Liberation does have a pretty outdated and tedious feeling mission structure. Lots of those infamous tailing missions, along with some really odd and boring missions where you need to parkour something in a certain time span or protect some AIs against waves of incoming enemies. The missions definitely can feel a bit repetitive at times and it makes it hard to continue playing for long periods of time. I wish they offered a little more variety and unique mission structures. There's also a couple basic puzzles in the game which weren't great either. They were so simple and hardly offered any challenge which made them unsatisfying to complete. Liberation also has a headquarters slash home base system although it is very simple and shallow. You can complete trades, buy ships through a menu to improve your business which really just increases your economy and wealth. We usually have some sort of system like this in these older AC games so it's not exactly anything innovative. You can also change your weapons and persona in your home base, which you can do pretty easily in the open world as well. So yeah, pretty basic headquarter system. A large majority of the game takes place in New Orleans, which feels pretty similar to Boston and New York from AC3, just smaller and more condensed. It is brimming with life though, and tons of NPCs roaming the streets, making it quite immersive and a fitting setting for an Assassin's Creed experience. You also spend quite a lot of time in the bayou, which is like a swamp outside New Orleans. It's definitely not as fun to explore, but introduces some nice environmental variety, and the landscape is also completely different, offering for a lot of tree parks parkour and the use of canoes. You also spend a decent amount of time in this small village in Mexico, which looks beautiful. It's very vibrant, once again offering a nice change in scenery and some variety from New Orleans and the bayou, and you even get a brief snow mission in New York with Connor. The whole open world and the way it works with traveling in between the different biomes and environments is very similar to Assassin's Creed 3, just everything being on a smaller scale. The graphics in Liberation also look quite good still, and it has some really nice vibrant and lighting. The graphics for Liberation were also remastered alongside AC3, so it all looks pretty good. Assassin's Creed Liberation is a unique entry in the Assassin's Creed series. I found the story to be quite dull and boring for the most part, aside from the last couple sequences of the game. The gameplay is pretty much copied and pasted from AC3 with a few new small additions like the whip and chain kill feature, as well as the persona system which is probably the biggest change involving how the game plays out. The world is immersive and brimming with life and has quite a lot of variety with all the different locations you will visit in the game. I think Liberation is decent. Definitely not as good as AC3 or a lot of the other games in the series, but it does of course offer us a traditionally styled AC experience while still having some creative new elements like the personas. I definitely think Liberation had more potential that it didn't necessarily live up to, and perhaps if the story was better constructed and the characters and plot were more engaging, then it would have been much better received than it was. Liberation does come free with Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered though, so I'd still recommend checking it out for yourself if you own it or are a big fan of Assassin's Creed and haven't tried it yet, but for more casual fans or people who haven't played Assassin's Creed, you're definitely better off skipping Liberation. Unless you happen to own or want to get AC3 Remastered, then you might as well check it out since it comes with the game for free. But feel free to let me know what you guys think about Liberation in the comments. People have pretty mixed feelings about this one, so I'm curious what you guys think. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you consider dropping a like and subscribing for more Assassin's Creed related content in the future. I also left a link to my review of Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered in the description if you want to check that out. And other than that, thanks for watching and stay stealthy out there, Assassins.